Germany, Russia. Portugal to begin with. Zef. What will be Germany's 100th World Cup finals match? The first nation to reach that landmark. And will it be Cristiano Ronaldo? Or will it? Portugal. It is indeed. Portugal Italy. in Group G Germany with Germany, Ghana and Portugal USA. In Group G. Mario. And that means that the one ball remaining in here is that of Russia, and they will complete Group H alongside Belgium, Algeria G and Korea two. Republic. So no surprise and for the final one in group Australia. Is, uh, just group recapping C, on these Colombia, groups. Greece, Côte d'Ivoire, Japan. See at the head of group B, group D, Uruguay, Uruguay Costa Rica, England, Italy. England and group Italy. E, Switzerland, game. Ecuador, France, Honduras. Group F, Argentina, Bosnia Herzegovina, Iran, G Nigeria. Is the one group G, Germany, Portugal, Ghana, USA. And group H, Belgium, Algeria, Russia, Korea Republic. Thanks so much for staying there. Let's try and make uh, some kind of uh, implications of what has happened in Brazil. Uh, all set for 2014, Ghana uh, being paired with uh, Portugal, uh, the United States of America, and of course, our uh, greatest, what people think the greatest team will have to meet Germany in 2014. Uh, Reverend Asekofi is a former Black Stars uh, player. I also have Felix Abouadji, a former uh, Stars uh, player, on the phone lines now. Uh, thanks so much for your time, uh, the two gentlemen. Yes, right. Yeah. So let me first of all come to Reverend uh, Asekofi. Now, Ghana, Germany, uh, United States, and Portugal. Uh, 2010 and now, uh, how would you describe the group in which we are? Um, firstly, uh, I think it is the same group that we met in South Africa, with the exception of Portugal. Mm. That is the only difference. And the way we were able to qualify, that luckily for Ghana, USA is not a small club to beat, especially as they have changed their coach. You know, they are the same players. One thing about Ghana that I am confident that we can qualify from the group. You know, after playing USA, which all our attention, firstly, as we will just tackle match after match, mm. we have to plan very well and uh, use every thing that we know. One thing about Ghana, we don't play in a system that will baffle people. So if you want to read us, you know, our last match against Egypt, do you know Milo was hired by the Egyptians to mm. just go and reveal what he has just uh, given to Ghana Black Stars? And when you went there for about three weeks, they still couldn't qualify. It means what Milo came to teach the boys is not what they played. That is the reason why they couldn't qualify. And uh, playing against U.S., I think our attention should be first on the U.S. match. Because Portugal and uh, Germany, one will lose by all means, the two giants. And uh, uh, let's tackle the match against U.S. first. Mm. After qualify, as soon as we beat the U.S. team, we will qualify. Right. But Reverend, hold the line for me. Let me speak to Felix Abouadje. Now, Felix, uh, Reverend Osekofi uh, strongly believes that Ghana can squeeze through to the next round. Uh, you share this uh, view? Hello, hello Felix Abouadje. Yeah, I'm here. Right. I'm, I'm asking that Reverend Osekufi uh, strongly believes that we can easily squeeze through to uh, the second round. Uh, do you believe the same? Yeah, I think uh, we have uh, plenty to do if we want to qualify. Uh, the call that we have to break is uh, against uh, the Portugal. Because uh, it's the Portugal that is missing in our, our game. Because if you see Cristiano Ronaldo... I think this is the best time for him uh, to also shine in the World Cup. So I believe they will also be preparing very, very adequately and make sure that they break that genes against Ghana. 
Uh, if you want to qualify, it means that we have to take the three points from USA, our first game against USA. It means if we take that three points, then we have the opportunity to go through. Play against Germany will be a very, very difficult time because uh, the crop of German players, the young players that are uh, all coming up in the, the likes of uh, Mula, Bethel Rosel and others, I believe they are playing wonderfully and uh, they want to make sure that they will go through. They are also favorite to win the World Cup. So I believe it will be very difficult against Germany in our last game. But against US, I believe we can take that three points. Against uh, the Cristiano Ronaldo, I think it's a balanced game and I believe we can even uh, uh, we can, we can make sure and pick a point. So it's a tricky draft. We should not take it lightly. We have to train adequately, mobilize the boys and make sure that at least our first game against the USA must be a done deal before we can go through. Now, you think that uh, a match against uh, Germany is going to be a very tough one. Now, looking at the team that we took to South Africa and what we have now, which areas of the game should we, which areas of the team should we strengthen in our attempt to uh, overcome Portugal and perhaps uh, fix a draw with Germany if it is possible? If you look at Ghana Blast as our team at the moment, uh, the department where we have to strengthen is our goalkeeping department. I think uh, uh, Adam, uh, Kwarase, and uh, uh, our goalkeeper, they are, they are shaking. And I believe they have to play adequately more so that they have the confidence also to play well in the World Cup. It might not be very easy at the World Cup. Uh, the defensive department, I believe they are also shaking. We don't have... Uh, the, the, the best ball back line who will stand for us. Because Chapi are used to change it and now we need the back four to be consistent. They have to play four, five matches consistently and make sure they have the confidence to play in the World Cup. Mm. The midfield department is a little bit okay. Right. The likes of ACN and others they are in. As a margin in attack and others, I think they are very, very strong. So the coaching department has been strengthened before we can make an impact in the World Cup. Mm. Let me go to Reverend Osekofi and come back to you. Now, Reverend, uh, the two of you seem to be on the same path. You're sure Ghana can qualify through the, to the next round. Now, Felix thinks that strengthening the goalkeeping uh, department of our game uh, will push us on. Is that what you think, too? Um, really. And uh, the truth in football, whether the goalkeeper is weak or good, Every goalkeeper depends on his defenders because he is the last defender. Last I listened to Dodo Ankara, mm. he said when he is in the post, he directs the affairs of the four defenders before him because if they lose her, he will be in trouble. Truly, what Abwaji said was the truth. And I know because Kosiapia listened to us, when we met the Egyptians in Kumasi, we all saw that the defense was a bit good. That is the reason why, apart from the penalty that they got, right? Uh, Fatah Dauda was on holiday that day. So if the defense, as uh, Abwaji said, is just uh, been tight, brother, in Ghana, we don't play any mysterious system that you can read us. When we meet you, one thing I've got to know about Ghanaian footballers, what you are doing, we will do the same and do it better than you. At the, the U.S., the reason why I'm confident we can beat them, there is no plan that we use in beating them. When, when they are playing, we will play it and do it better. Mm. That is the reason why I have the confidence. And the first match between Germany and the Portugal, automatically one will go down. That is the reason why we have to take advantage by working very hard to beat the U.S. If right. we be there, we can qualify. Right. Reverend Sekou, thanks so much for speaking to me. Let me wrap up with Felix Abwaji, uh, former Ghana's international. Now, Felix, hard work is what Reverend Kofi is uh, suggesting. Now, uh, Coach Apia, what technically does he need to start doing from now ahead of 2014, Brazil? Uh, I believe uh, he has to motivate the players at this stage of the competition. You know, now the draw has come. Now, we need good preparation. You know, if you don't have good preparation, at least you must have all the, the crop of players available so that they play three or four friendly matches together before we kick our first ball. So it means, 
have a chance here. Have to organize the team very, very right from day one at this moment. Try to be calling them and try to motivate them. Secondly, we must have injury free players. To look at our team in general at this moment, without Asamoajan, we will be in a big trouble. You know, without Michael Essien, the young ones will be very, very difficult to, uh, 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 to cope. So I believe we must have this, our couple of players together without injury free. And I believe when we kick our first match against USA, we must make sure that we must pick the best 11 players who, who are going to take the three maximum points for us. Because our going through the group stages will be on our first match against USA. Picking that three points will give us edge over the Germans. Even the Germans and the, the affairs here, they might draw. So if we win our first game, it means we'll go on top of the list of the Lord. So I could see up here has got a lot of work to do. Right. Because they, they, we don't have any superstars. They are all equally based players and they'll make sure that they'll play like Wounded Lions. Make sure that we we'll bring them three maximum points at six. Thank you so much. Felix Abwaje is a former Ghana international. They're talking to me about uh, Ghana's uh, group, uh, Ghana, Germany, Portugal, U.S. But uh, Coach Chris Yapia has been reacting to uh, the group. Uh, let's listen. Total confidence in my players, and I believe that we give them a really good game. Well, you agreed that you're certainly one of uh, the favourites when it comes to the African uh, contingent. And now having seen the teams that you're drawn in there, your realistic chance of making it through these uh, group stages? Oh, I believe that totally, you know, there's no way we will not make it. We will make sure, you know, the most important thing is making sure that we prepare very well, you know, and no matter what teams comes your way. You know, football is of age and not like before. You need to mention four or three names and then everybody is scared. You know, we've got competent players and I have total confidence that, you know, we'll go around the first stage. And a final word to all the Africans that are watching and obviously supporting, having known who you're going to be facing off with, just talking about the preparations and that Ghana is going to give it their all. I think all Africans need to put um, their total support and prayers and anything that they can do to be behind the African teams. So that, you know, it's important that Africans we prove that given the chance we can also, you know, win the World Cup. And Coach Chris Yapiade, uh, quite uh, enthusiastic and quite expectant of uh, Ghana's uh, participation and perhaps uh, squeezing straight into uh, the semi final, as has been predicted all around. James Oedig is here in the studio, he's a soccer uh, enthusiast and a historian. He has everything about soccer. James, welcome. Yeah, good evening. You, you, I'm not sure you were so much surprised about Ghana, Germany, USA, Portugal. I was praying for such a group, mm. yes, uh, because. Uh, no, let me quickly thank God that uh, we are in, 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 in a group like. No, what I'm trying to say, I want to quote Shakespeare. Say all is well that ends well. Right. Now it has ended well for us. Mm. Uh, we are in a group that I feel a little bit comfortable. Some, some, uh, are, yes. some are of the feeling that that's quite a very strong group. Yeah, it is. All the groups are strong. That's what what everybody, everybody should understand. Mm. Uh, Thirty-two well-trained, well-qualified teams. Assemble will be assembling in Brazil. Right. For the 2014 FIFA World Cup. So every, every, every country is good. Uh, what you have to quickly note is that the parent is said that I can say with a high degree of certainty that all the five representatives of Africa will qualify to the second round. I'm saying this because of the parent. Right. Uh, the, uh, the South American reps will qualify because they are playing their terrain and they are very strong. And I can look at the group and say that Brazil will qualify from Group A, uh, Colombia will qualify from Group C, uh, Uruguay in Group D. Argentina and Group F. Mm. So we are looking at those who follow them to the second round. And we are looking at them. And you think that is one of them? Yes, oh, definitely Ghana will overrun uh, Portugal. That's the problem. Th that's a strong country with uh, the likes of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo uh, in there. Yes, it depends on how Cristiano Ronaldo attacks that issue. Because Cristiano Ronaldo has been christened either the problem or the solution of the team. So if you uh, eclipse him, if you close him, mm. if you uh, overwhelm the Portuguese team, numerically in the midfield. You can beat Portugal. They were uh, uh, beneficiaries of the playoff. They didn't qualify one touch that Ghana did. So on paper, you rate even Ghana higher than Portugal. I've given Germany the, uh, the first slot. Mm. So we are looking at uh, Portugal, Germany, and uh, uh, Portugal, Ghana, and USA. And in terms of the US, I'm very comfortable because uh, in the 
Um, my local language, they say they are genocide. That is your old uh, wife. Right. You know? So uh, at any time, you can read, 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 do your superiority over him. Mm. So Ghana will overrun U.S., all things being equal. And our problem will be Portugal. And you also know that Portugal will have a problem with Germany. Two European nations, it will be a very strong fight. And I expect a German to overwhelm them. If Germany beats Portugal, it means that they already lost a match. Right. All you need to do is to push them to lose another match or to draw with them, then they are out. So you are thinking we can still go ahead and beat Portugal? Oh, sure. Why Why? Why not? Because I said they are beneficiaries of the playoff. And you know what happened? They could even have been admitted uh, the, by Sweden. The, the argument is that this is the time for uh, Cristiano Ronaldo to also uh, show class at a World Cup tournament. And so uh, something that this is the time he's really going to shine. And this, uh, this is the time that it's late for him because he should have shown uh, his uh, brilliance earlier tournaments, not this time around when everybody has known him, when everybody knows uh, what he can do with the ball, when everybody knows how to plot against such an individual. Mm. Gone are the days when the Diago mesmerized the whole world, the one he was not well known in 86, when Pele did it in uh, 58, when uh, Zagallo did it in 58, and when all those people who shot into the limelight. It was their first appearance or second appearance. Not when you're already known in the system. That is not football. Right. Football is that if you now ask yourself, yeah, who are the scouts you are going to use? The last time in 2006, we had the services of Saki from U.S., uh, C.C. Jones, Antikofi, the only in Ghana football, and then Samadé, the multi system man. So, uh, spying on the other opponents, and then we had a very good tournament mm. in 2006. We went to the second round. In 2010, it was the same uh, uh, procedure we used. So instead of we really over concentrating on our own preparation, we should also be opening the window and be looking at what our we, opponents we, will be doing. We, we played uh, Germany and the United States in South Africa 2010. Yeah. Is that an advantage? It is an advantage because we uh, already right. know them. So you uh, hold it. Let me try and, and go to Nigeria and speak to Pepsi Adioku, a Nigerian sports journalist. And uh, Pepsi, thanks so much for your time. Yeah. Hello, Pepsi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Right. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, what is the level My of uh, excitement in Nigeria? Nigeria, Argentina, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Iran. Nigerians excited about the group? Yes, they are, but mixed feelings, really. Um, it it seems, looks easy, at least when you talk of um, Iran and, you know, Bosnia. But, you know, Argentina is a tough one. Um, in 2010, it was a good game. Uh, it was actually the team against the goalkeepers, so to speak, you know. you know. Uh, but the boys did their best. Um, in fact, many of us who were at the stadium had tears in our eyes because we felt, um, you know, that they gave their all, so to speak. But, um, you know, it, it was a case of, uh, set, you know, set getting people ready to go out to war, but not really preparing them very well. But this time around, the preparation has been pretty good. We have a very good coach. We have a good team, you know, uh, talented players spread across and folks seem to know uh, uh, when to pick the right crop of players because as we know with football, it's all about selection, selection, selection. You know, if you don't have the right selection there, you know, you, you could lose. So yeah, there's excitement, you know, and a, a little bit of a uh, need when it comes to Argentina. Pepsi, uh, before I let you go, which two teams do you see uh, squeezing through to the next round? From, from our group? From your group? Yeah, definitely. Nigeria, Argentina. And uh, the, uh, the five African uh, countries uh, that will be in uh, Brazil, uh, do you see them uh, getting to the second round and perhaps uh, moving on in the tournament? Come again. I'm asking the five African countries there. Uh, do you see them yeah. moving through to the second round and perhaps um, into I, the I, tournament? I think, uh, yeah, yeah, well, I think Cameroon should do well. I, I think, I believe. Um, um, I, I can't really, you know, it's, it's, they, they, all, they seem to be um, uh, pretty um, well strong, not doing badly, the African countries. So we just hope, you know, they, they stand up at the end of the day, you know, with, as I said, with good selection. You know, all the countries seem to have the uh, proper crop of players to deliver. But let's just hope good selection of all that they are fit, they are in form, and if it's a good day, uh, they, they should deliver. 
thanks so much for speaking to me. Pepsi is a Nigerian sports journalist. Uh, James is still here. Now, James, hey. uh, 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 before we left off, uh, let us talk about Nigeria school. But before we left off, I was asking that we played Germany and we played uh, USA. Is that an advantage? How advantageous is that? Because they are known customers. I mean, we played against them. Mm. You saw their strength and their weakness. We lost against Germany and beat Yeah, we uh, lost against the Germany USA. because there was a lack of concentration on one of our key players, Pencil. And Ozzy made good use of it. He's mm. showing you that he's a real striker. You see what he's doing in uh, uh, Man City now. He's mm. a very good... Uh, sorry, in Arsenal. He's a very good striker. That was just a loss of... Uh, temporal loss of uh, concentration, which can be corrected easily. Because now you have Opari and you have Ukuma and you have Arisen Afu who are well tested, and I don't think they will make such a mistake again. Now, let's quickly talk about Nigeria's group. I'll come back to uh, Nigeria in the South Africa 2010 uh, did not performed that well. This group, Bosnia is the governor, Iran, and uh, uh, is this their time to show class? No, Bosnia, they should go and enjoy I mean, their tournament. <laughs> I was very happy when they qualified. You see, they fall in their country. Uh, it's a new uh, emerging country, and they did very well. But I don't think this is their year. They should wait for subsequent uh, editions of the World Cup before they can show class. So I, I don't see them going uh, past the... Uh, preliminary rounds. Mm -hmm. Iran, they well, they are very strong. But if you compare the African game, uh, the level of the game to the game in the Middle East, then you rate Nigeria above uh, Iran. It's all it is very clear. And uh, what Nigeria didn't do well in uh, Argentina is that uh, Yakub in, in Ibe, South Africa in South Africa is that Yakub Ibe, me had a very very miserable tournament. I mean, you saw those chances he lost against Korea. I mean, those uh, cities he lost, and that really brought the team down. But I think uh, the Stephen Keshi. And uncle, uh, mm. the uncle, the tanker team, we work around mm. that. So, and then uh, James, uh, hold it on your, uh, mm. on your screens now. These are key players to watch in Ghana's group: uh, Ozil and then Ronaldo. Uh, these are players that uh, will torment uh, Ghana when uh, they meet us. But I, I wanted to ask: Nigeria managed to beat uh, Argentina with the likes of uh, Rashid Yakini. In is this? Can Nigeria play back that same performance? No, they lost to Argentina instead in 1994. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but exactly. They, they scored first through some sincere. Right. In that an industrial notice uh, of uh, US. I remember that much very well. Uh, they beat because Pele, uh, no, Diago Maradona played above himself in that particular game. In fact, one of the goals he scored, that uh, free kick, whereby he broke the wall still uh, frozen on the ball. Mm. Nobody has done that. No footballer has done that in history. To freeze on the ladder, only Diago did it. And that broke the wall uh, before uh, Ng Gabriel, uh, Basista, took that terrible shot with Peter Rufai parried for Kanija to slot in for mm. the equalizer. And the other second one was a very long pass to Kanija, which uh, he scored. So it is a, 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 a parry that brought up a serious memory because that, that was the man that was discovered that Diago was using uh, performance enhancing drugs. And he was banned from the tournament. When they met again, is it in 2010 or is it 2002? When uh, Nigeria met That was uh, in 2002. And that was in 2002. Uh, there was also a hard uh, match. He took the ingenuity of uh, NG Gabriel to score from that corner kick. When he catch him, the Nigerian group one is judge. The area ball and the and let's come to Ghana as yes. we're getting ready to wrap up. <laughs> now, with this group, uh, Germany, Portugal, USA. What strategy should Coach Apia be looking at? Oh, he should play this normal game. I don't know the pairing, but um, I hope that we start with the U.S. match. Yes, so that, that we get that, that first three match. match, and then we pray that Germany beats Portugal to 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 put them in a very disadvantageous position for the mm. second match. If that's the case, then all we need to do is to hold Germany or Portugal. Then we have qualified. Are we are we capable of doing that? Oh, Germany sure, we are Portugal. capable. If the, if the, the concern is Germany. Yeah, no, assuming you even lose to Germany. I mean, between Germany and Portugal, one will lose. That is where the arithmetic is. Mm. If Germany beats Portugal, it means Portugal is not a disadvantageous position right. for the next match. That is what we are talking about. Mm. It's a permit, uh, permutation and combination. So that's it. so all you need to do. So, I'm so all you need to do right. the first half is to win at least one match against the, uh, against US. US. Mm. That is secured. Right. And then between these two uh, tough uh, opponents, you struggle for a draw. Yeah, uh, drawing boots, or you win one and you lose one. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose to Germany and beat Portugal. But, uh, and, uh, so, uh, KP Boati, uh, Kevin Prince Boati has uh, tweeted, and you can see on your screen. Now, he said, brother, it's time again. That's how beautiful life is. Uh, can't wait 
Love you, bro. And so, uh, Ghana, uh, Germany, uh, brother against brother. We are likely to force them into a draw and perhaps add a point to uh, <laughs> yeah. our three points against U United States. That's what your uh, yeah, that's my uh, you, you are projection. Yes, your yeah. projection. Yes, right. Now let's wrap up in just briefly uh, three minutes of your or just three seconds of your time. Can Ghana go into the second round? Oh, by uh, qualifying from this group, we hope to meet any of the other countries that were not seeded. You see, the problem is the seeded teams. If you look at South America, they, are, they will be playing in a very familiar environment, Argentina, uh, Colombia, Brazil, and then uh, Uruguay. Mm. So they will go to the second round. I, I, I wish we avoid them. Let's take any of the uh, European teams, excluding uh, Spain. Then we are in the, uh, in the quarterfinal. And perhaps yes. the semifinal. Sure. And the semifinal target should be amended. It should be the ultimate. James, thanks so much for <laughs> Thank speaking. You, James Ojedeji is a soccer historian. We've been talking about uh, the draw and, of course, Ghana, Germany, uh, USA, and Portugal. That's the uh, permutation in our group, and Ghana expected to go there. And James uh, predicting that uh, not only the semi-final, but we should move ahead into the ultimate. This is the first part of today's big story. The interactive segment it's coming up in a moment with a lady, Marianne. Stay there. I'm coming back in a moment. Portugal to begin with. Zef. What will be Germany's 100th World Cup finals match? The first nation to reach that landmark. And will it be Cristiano Ronaldo? Well, Portugal. It is indeed. Portugal in Group G Germany with Germany, Ghana and Portugal USA. In Group G. Mario. And that means that the one ball remaining in here is that of Russia and they will complete Group H alongside Belgium, Algeria G and Korea two. Republic. So no surprise uh, for the final. This is total confidence in my players and I believe that we give them a really good game. Well, you agreed that you're certainly one of uh, the favorites when it comes to the African uh, contingent. And now having seen the teams that you're drawn in there, your realistic chance of making it through these uh, group stages? Oh, I believe that totally, you know, there's no way we will not make it. We will make sure, you know, the most important thing is making sure that we prepare very well, you know, and no matter what teams come to your way. You know, football is of age and not like before. You need to mention four or three names and then everybody is scared. You know, we've got competent players and I have total confidence that, you know, we'll go around the first stage. And a final word to all the Africans that are watching and obviously supporting, having known who you're going to be facing off with, just talking about the preparations and that Ghana is going to give it their all. I think all Africans need to put um, their total support and prayers and anything that they can do to be behind the African teams. So that, you know, it's important that Africans we prove that, given the chance, we can also, you know, win. <laughs> Welcome back. So let's get interactive. You will find us facebook.com slash join news on TV. Like our page, comment on all the posts we put there, and then we would amplify them, sharing them with the rest of the world. If you're sending us a Twitter handle, it's at join news on TV. Remember to use the hashtag JN Interactive GH so we'll be able to sort all your tweets out at once and take them all. Our email is join news IM at motor TV world.com. The WhatsApp number is 0260 zero one I am on Twitter too and I tweet at MN Toure. And this is where tech meets news to set the agenda. So today we are talking about three things because they are all trending. We're talking about the Farmers' Day. It's been half a century already since we started honoring and celebrating our farmers here in Ghana. We are also remembering Nelson Mandela. And then the World Cup draw. It's, uh, you know, a triple whammy today. So we are talking about all of that. And um, let's start with that, with everything that are trending. And I'd like for you to 
actually follow me on this one so that you see what is actually happening. But uh, it's unfortunate I can't mirror that. But uh, in, in Ghana, you know, the, the celebration, as I was saying, started in 1985. But uh, since 1988, the first Friday in December has been set aside as a national holiday to honor deserving farmers at the national level. And more than 70% of Ghanaians are subsistence farmers. And most of us, in one way or the other, depend on these farmers for our food. The 2013 National Best Farmer is a 58-year-old Alhaji Awudu Karim from the Kassan and Kana district of the Upper East region. And uh, so we, we are asking you what you think about the whole farming industry and the big question is do you think the farmers are well motivated especially in the 21st century let's take our first video blog we'll come back and do some more trending issues I, I don't think I don't think we are farming in Ghana I don't think we are farming in Ghana. you see when a champion was in power a champion brought about the operation feed yourself in Ghana. And we had a surplus without going outside to borrow from anybody. We had food surplus that we were able to um, we were able to send food from Ghana to the rest of West African countries. Right now, people farm in acres of land. When Real industrial countries are farming in hectares of land, thousands of hectares of land. That means we are not doing anything. You know, our farmers, they are very good farmers. Every one of them wanted to achieve something. You see, sometimes we want to, we have to, we don't have to blame our farmers and we don't have to blame God. Nature does its own thing. Sometimes we, have, we can. In a, uh, let's say we can have a good harvest sometimes and then another time, but you know, it's because of the weather. You know, when people, when, when you sow, when a farmer sow, he's expecting that he gets a what? A good harvest. But maybe one way or the other, maybe no rains. No rains. If the rains are not coming, what do you want him to do? See, I don't know. Do say you won't say you do something more. I will say almost kill on who be me. I mean, you know, we be instead like you know, I will say go for the new one. We are not uh, export uh, cassava plantain and other things, but our things is costful. So, what is the reason why they say they are going to award our award awarded them? I don't understand because if really they are working, you can see that our things will be cheap in the town. But it's costful, and they are telling me these people are doing hard works and the, 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 the country is moving forward. This today holiday that they are giving, them, the, the country is losing radar. So welcome back. We'll take some comments that have been coming in before we'll take our next video blog. And today, you know, everything, like I said, is in triple fold. And uh, on the farmers issue, a lot of comments have been coming in. And uh, we're asking, uh, you know, you to share your views with us on the issues that we have posted there. And I'm hoping that uh, the iPad would uh, not mess around. And this one is coming from Johnny Kobna Abronoma. He says, partially at his best, men always um, play playing cards, whilst our women are always rushing to feed their children's children. Wow. Okay, so I'll try and take our next video blog whilst, you know, we sort this one out and take some of the comments. So there are more female farmers than there are men. But, you know, men have dominated the national awards. Every time you'd hear it's a man, it's a man, it's a, it's a, it's a man. And I think a few women have want it here or there. We, we want to ask uh, what you think women can do to gain prominence, you know, like men have, and also win some of these awards. Let's take our next video blog. Why do we have to leave things to women? Back in the day, it was more like a family or farming. 
whereby you have your children and everybody farming with you. Farming is not a woman's job. Sorry. Farming is not a woman's job. Farming is men. We need to go on the farm and farm for you and then and, 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 and plant some stuff for the country too. But you are not paying those people working on the farm so well. So how many of them, most of them are leaving their, what do you call it, most of them are leaving um, the villages back to the cities. Therefore, that left the women in the villages to farm. That's why we all think that the farm the farmers have to be women. But the farmers who have to speak with men, the strong men who need to farm. We should buy the machinery for them. I schooled in the north for some time. I've been seeing how our women will join their husbands to farm. So, you know, it's about education. You see, we have some farmers. I don't know about the selection. If our selectors will go deep into villages or the rural, rural areas, instead they will, you know, mostly if you don't, if you don't have somebody to see you that downtrodden somewhere in some your friends say a front place or a país on corner be there. If no one sees you, and maybe this person is doing good over there, and no one sees you, how can you get an award? Bano, I say Bano, Benam, Jumadin, I say farming, no, say no, yeah, you know, and also the son of me who say, you know, be Bena, intimate involved, yeah. So we'll take the comments on the Farmers Day celebration later. Moving on from there to our second trending issue. Nelson Mandela, you know, fondly known as Madiba, will be laid to rest on Sunday, December 15th at his uh, rural home. And a memorial service will be held at Johannesburg Stadium on Tuesday, December 10th to actually honor him. And we are asking how you would remember him. Let's take our next video blog. Nelson Mandela is being a very good man to the whole of Africa and the world. Nelson Mandela really inspired a lot of politicians to be who they are, including foreign politicians such as Obama and a lot of people. But what Nelson Mandela did for Africa, I'm quite sure there is probably no man who had come onto this earth, received that kind of punishment, 27 years in prison, and developed his life. I mean, he's the only African who, was, who decided to take one term. The only African president who decided, I'm going to take one term, I'm not going to take any other term again. How many Africans are going to do that? I've done that. It's humility and hopeful and the way he pursuing his achievements uh -huh. they put him into prison jail because of independence and after he come out he became a president through his humility and uh, faithfulness and hope that he have so if i said I'm learning something from this man. It's his humility and hope, hopeful that he has. Mandela is a very great person. Simple, simply put, somebody who fought a very hard fight for his people. He fought because of his people. He went to prison because of his people. And today, what sent him to wherever he is now? because of his people, because he wanted freedom for his people and, you know, he was arrested in 1961, 62 there, they sentenced him to, to imprisonment and he was there for about 27 years, 
He came back around 89, 90, huh? Yeah. And what did he bring? He came along with a sickness, land, land's problem. Because I don't know the treatment he was given over there when he was in prison. So, you know, it's a sorrowful, you know, scene, yeah. So, he's a great man, simple put. He came, he rallied, you know, along his people. He was able to get independent for them from apartheid regime. That regime which sentenced him. Welcome back. So we'll take uh, some comments on our next issue. And we are saying that South Africa's first black president, Nelson Mandela, passed on yesterday. How would you remember him? And so many comments have come through from you all telling us how you remember him. Uh, Gilbert Asylum from Bolgatanga says, This man is a true hero, not only for South Africa, but the world at large. A man who spent 27 years in prison and upon his release did not revenge, but called for reconciliation for peace to prevail. This is a man whom both the present and uh, generational leaders must emulate. May his gentle soul rest in peace. Darling boy says peacemaker. That's how you would remember him. Aaron says now before you heard it. No Aaron. We have heard it for a long time now but it is trending on social media. So we're just asking how you would remember him. In Shiraba says, remembering him as the epitome of humanity, uh, um, harbinger of hope, grandpapa of reconciliation, and above all, using sense of humor to melt the ice. R.I.P., great man. And I love that. Also, Frimpon says, not only um, African, but the world has lost a great man. Rest in peace. And uh, this one is coming from from. And this is from our four laces. Uh, rather unfortunate, though, but may he have a peaceful rest upon your boy, a true son of Africa. Or oh, Hene Owari, a hero whom we should learn from God's way. Yes, I'll surely remember him for his forgiven spirit. May he so rest in peace. Eliasu Haruna Tamale, calm, somber leader with a desire to lead his people to the promised land. A leader who didn't care about uh, what goes into his pocket, but fights for the benefits of the larger majority. A leader who could sacrifice for his people. He would be missed so much. Slim says, Bosu uh, Katik to, or um, I don't know what this one means. Uh, Jerry says, as the man whose death, though was expected, um, shook, uh, was expected, caused grief, pain, and a, a feeling of loss across racial and national boundaries and the whole wide world. Majid Audu from Gushegu, the most noble man in Africa. Adi says, his head should be on every currency worldwide. Ah, that would be fantastic. So we can have a, a world currency with uh, Nelson Mandela's head on it. Mm, that, that wouldn't be bad at all. Kobe says, I will not fight only against the white uh, demonstration, but the black demonstration too. R.I.P. Nelson Mandela, and this is a quote that you're putting here. Simon says, I remember him of his education and the need to forgive others. I'll take two more comments before we go to our last trending issue. Kuku Paris says, for the single fact that he never went for a second term. Rest in peace, Madiba. Dorothy, as the greatest African presido and freedom fighter, R.I.P. Nelson Mandela. Tijani just says, R.I.P. Madiba. I'll say where he's gone with the palatable quotes. Oh my God, yes. He is gone with what is left that he could have given you of his quotes, but what he left us, we still have them, so he hasn't taken those away. We still have those ones. And uh, we'll go and take our final trending comment. And uh, FIFA, FIFA World Cup, the draw is out. And Ghana has a huge task, a very daunting one, of course, ahead. Well, that's how I look at it. And we wanted to find out what you think about it. Um, we have been drawn in a very, very uh, tough group indeed. Uh, the USA is featuring... In that group, uh, we met them, I think, in the last World Cup anyway. And so perhaps uh, in hindsight, we know 
uh, what we know and, and that you know, we can beat them if we try our best. Even in Germany, I mean, they are a very formidable team. N no two ways about that. But uh, I'm sure that uh, if the boys actually, you know, put their minds to it, we will actually do something against them. I know there are skeptics who believe that they will whip us, but hey. Uh, we, we will also do our utmost to, to bring the cup. That's the ultimate. I mean, Chris Yepia was talking about it. The ultimate is that he wants, he wants us to bring the World Cup home. So we've been asking you uh, what you think about uh, today's draw. But first, let's take a, a, listen, a brief listen at Chris Yepia before I take your comments. Yes, and I believe that we give them a really good game. Well, you agreed that you're certainly one of uh, the favorites when it comes to the African uh, contingent. And now having seen the teams that you're drawn in there, your realistic chance of making it through these uh, group stages. Oh, I believe that totally, you know, there's no way we will not make it. We will make sure, you know, the most important thing is making sure that we prepare very well, you know, and no matter what teams comes your way. You know, football is of age and not like before. You need to mention four or three names and then everybody is scared. You know, we've got competent players and I have total confidence that you know, we'll go around the first stage. And a final word to all the Africans that are watching and obviously supporting, having known who you're going to be facing off with, just talking about the preparations and that Ghana is going to give it their all. I think all Africans need to put um, their total support and prayers and anything that they can do to be behind the African teams. So that, you know, it's important that Africans we prove that given the chance we can also so Kwesi Apia has said it all, anything that you can do, and I mean anything, nothing is off limits. So anything that you can do to help the team, go ahead and do it to help us. So we're asking what you think about today's draw. We'll take two comments on that one. FIFA 2014 World Cup draw is out, uh, and Ghana has been drawn with uh, Germany, Portugal. What do you think? And Ghana being a sports-loving you know, country, 111 comments have dropped on just this particular topic uh, you know, so many. Let me just try and open so many of them. R.I.P. Ghana. <laughs> You're so funny, Nuete. What do you mean, R.I.P. Ghana? That we're not going to make it? No. Frederick says, group of death. Uh, dollars, Calvin Prince says, yes, since it's a World Cup, each team that qualifies is not easy. So if we prepare massively well, we will qualify from our group. Kennedy, Asari Queen, the best draw ever. And we should only send our team there because we are there to add to numbers, but not to make anything important. Are you serious? Ah, you, no, 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 prophets of doom, RIP. No, 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 we are going. And look, we didn't go to <laughs> Brazil for nothing. I haven't ironed my bikini for nothing. We're going to the end so that I can start wearing it from our first game to the last one. So please, let's pray for the boys and we're edging the boys on hard work. Isako Ghana will go through the group Joseph says, uh, just the sort of team that Ghana needs to prove what a strong football nation we are. Yes, we are. We are a great football nation. Francis says, Marvim Ghana. Emmanuel Asiedu, I believe Ghana can sail through with hard work and perseverance. Yes, we can. Savali, Kelvin, group of death, but Ghana will go through. Isa says, Marian, I greet you. I greet you and I respond uh, to you, Isa. Um, Yao Francis, it is difficult for us to qualify. Uh, Bright Abwaji says, the only way we can sail through is um, by seeing from the point that the group is tough and therefore must leave no stone on 10. And of course, if you're going against a, a very formidable contender, you go and say, hey, this is it. I'm going to, you know, make it work. Richard Tete, this will be tough for the Ghanaian team. Abron Noma says, cool job for Ghana. Operation nine points. We are at the carnival. Nice. Emmanuel Sowa Pobi. At least, which is in Nigeria, the their job by taking them to a good World Cup. Ghana, which is the uh, Kai. Trust me, Ghana is winning. I hope Songo has had what he wants. Fire will burn his. <laughs> oh, this is not funny at all. But uh, I'll take my last comment. Uh, Ghana and Germany will go through, inshallah. And thank you for all the comments that have come through. Brightest back, so we can wrap up together. Welcome back. Right. Thanks.
so much and uh, we'll tell you later on that the body of departed South African apartheid icon Nelson Mandela will lie in the state at the Union Building in Pretoria, South Africa. And that's from December 11 to uh, 15. And uh, the South African High Commissioner to Ghana announced this at the news conference in Accra. And he, she said there will be an official memorial service at the FNB Stadium in Johannesburg, which is expected to be attended by global leaders. And also to expect in news that Ada police in Asokwa in the Ashanti region have arrested three suspects over recent robberies in Ahinsai. The suspects have been linked to two separate incidents. Right, so that's how we wrap it up the show for this week. Thanks so much for your time. We have joined this exclusive coming up right after this. My name is Bright Nanamfo. And my name is Marianne Ture. Have a pleasant weekend. Mm -hmm.